So, yeah, Deptective um, is a tool which plugs into the Java compiler and the idea is to validate the architecture of your application right at compile time. Okay. And you have a demo or some, right. uh, some so it's a plugin. Right, exactly. So let me let me show you a bit. I got uh, a demo here. So it is a plugin for the Java compiler. So the Wait. Java C compiler, it has a plugin API, so we can hook into it. And what I need to do is I set up, so I'm using Maven, and I'm setting up the Maven compiler plugin. And then I say I would like to use this plugin as a dependency here. And then uh, I just uh, say I would like to use the Deptective compiler plugin and I have some sorts of configuration options which are not too important for now. So this will run the plugin and it needs a configuration file. And the configuration file is JSON currently and this describes the structure of my project. So here I have components which are essentially groups of packages. So I have a UI component and it co has the com example UI package and it may read other components. So I may access packages from persistence and servers from within UI. But for instance, I might not access, let's say, the REST component from within the UI component. So this is my intended architecture. And if I compile the project now, the compiler plugin will validate the actual package dependencies against um, this description. So let's run it. Let me run Maven. So this is, oh, let me show this structure maybe a bit. Um, so this is just a, a little uh, Maven example project which has a couple of layers, persistence, REST service, and it's described in this um, uh, architecture description here. I so see. So let me compile it. Uh, Maven clean compile. <coughs> And it shouldn't take very long. And now I see, okay, the build has failed, so there was a compilation error, and this is expected. But of course, I well, I have built in to uh, a mistake in here, right? Right. So you made a mistake on purpose. I right? made it on purpose, to exactly. Show so and it says, okay, the package UI it must not access the package com example REST, and this is here in the view controller. So I go there in my IDE, uh, and I see, mm, okay, so from within this UI package, from, win from within this controller class, I made this reference here, and it's not foreseen in my architecture, right? So I could now remove this, or maybe I ha would have to adjust the architecture definition, um, but I'm aware now of this problem, right? There's no way to get around, so I will very instantly get this, this kind of feedback. So there's that, I validate this stuff, but then very often your project doesn't start on the green field, right? You have an existing code base and maybe now you would like to introduce this into your process. Mm -hmm. And there the idea is, well, you could start and write this JSON file from scratch, but it could become a bit you know, tedious and lots of work. So there's a way where you can dis uh, create the architecture description based on your current project and the current dependencies. So this will just be the current status and then you could adjust this into your intended model. Okay. So I can do that. And I have another project, which is um, MapStruct, which is an annotation processor, which I'm working on. And here I am now going to use Deptective to create this architecture de description. Mm -hmm. So let me show you the Maven palm file of this again. So here, now I'm using this analyze mode. P so before in the other example, I was using validate. Here I'm using analyze. And essentially I'm saying, okay, all dependencies to external packages which are not maintained within this project itself, they are fine. So let me run this, uh, it means, uh, uh, compile it again, <coughs> and now this will analyze the existing code and it will create this JSON file. So this is a bit a bigger project, so that's why it's taking some seconds. Oh, and I should, oh sorry, hold on, I just want to build a single component here. Not uh, because it's an entire project and just need to build uh, a single module. So let's do that. And it should just take a couple of seconds. So there you go. And now I can take a look at the generated uh, JSON file. Mm -hmm. And this is obviously a bit bigger because it's an existing project. And now I feel, okay, maybe that's still too much. And I would like, uh, you know, to have a bit of a more coarse grained view because now this is package by package. And now I know, I, I mean, I've been working on MapStruct for some time. I know there are some higher level components in there. For instance, there's multiple packages which contain to the model component. Mm -hmm. So what I can do here is I can say, um, I can say, let me remove this. And I would like to consider everything which is part of, of the internal model package and everything beneath that, I would like to consider this as a single module. So everything which is under internal model star, this should be a, a single component called model, right? So let's do that. Let me run that again. And now this JSON file should be a bit simpler. 
because now all those model packages, they are just considered as one component. Mm -hmm. And what I also can do is I can visualize the stuff using graph width. So besides the JSON file, it also generates a dot file, which I can use to have a visualization. So let me take um, the dot command, and I just render this graph width file as a PNG. And I can open this PNG file. And here and now I get a visual nice. representation of the packages, right? And this one, the uh, the internal component, this contains actually multiple packages. And I see now, okay, what are the dependencies? And there's one interesting thing I see here, which is marked within color. Mm -hmm. So I have a cycle here. So between model and conversion, there's a cycler dependency. And very often we don't want to have this in our architectures, right? So we would have to think how we could break this up. And I see the number of references. So I see, okay, 258 times the reference goes in this direction and just one time it goes in this direction. So probably I would look into my code base and try to remove this single reference to uh, clean this up, right? Mm -hmm. So that's essentially uh, detective. That's what you can do. I see. Okay. So a couple of questions. Sure. So and uh, can people use this with Java 8? Absolutely, yeah. So it works with Java 8 and it also works with Java 11. So there have been some changes in the plugin API, but it works with both versions. Okay, yes. so then can, uh, can we use that with uh, class paths and modules? Or how does it... Uh uh, yeah, that's a good question. So, um, I mean, it works at compilation time, right? So it really sees the source files of your project and the AST, the abstract syntax tree of those files. So I would say it doesn't matter too much whether the you are okay. going to use this with the class path or with the module path. It's let's say it works before that. But that being said, I'm thinking about some additional features which relate to modules. And one of them could be so in modules, I have this module info descriptor, right? Where I describe what's mm -hmm. the public mm -hmm. API of my module. And the very common issue I see is, um, so I have this public API, but then within the signatures, within the methods, I use internal types. And this means if someone is going to use this module, um, they cannot use this method because they cannot see this internal type. So this is like a, 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 a yep. incorrect definition of my public API, right? And this is something which also could detective detect and give you a build failure if you have this kind of situation. I see, okay. Um, if I have a really, really big, big, big project, right. uh, can I use that? Or is there like a limit or what will happen? Or it will so be slow? Or um, so, so far I uh, have, Let's say I have applied to one code base with ha which had like 900 classes. So it's not super big, but not very small. And then there was no noticeable overhead. So I would say this doesn't add very much overhead. I have not yet tested it with hundreds of thousands of classes, let's say. But I think very, in very general, it's, it's highly efficient because it's part of the compilation itself. So it, there's no separate pass needed. So there are similar plugins, but they work all later on. So this means they have to reparse through all the AST, reanalyze it, and we don't have this here because this works right within the compiler. So I think that's the best you could do, essentially. Okay. And uh, it's an um, open source project? Right. It's okay. open source. It's Apache licensed. Um, it's on GitHub. Uh, you can get it via Jitpacks if you would like to use it with Maven. I, I have not done a formal release, but there should be some one soon. And everyone is invited to join and collaborate, of course. Okay. So you expect people to also like, contribute to I the I would love that. Yeah. yeah I mean, okay. I have been in, c in touch with the JUnit team. They were interested to use it, actually. And yeah, I would love if people give it a try, contribute. Definitely. Add new features and... Exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, the more the merrier, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. And so, and where is it hosted? It's on GitHub, good you ask. Um, so I don't have a formal website yet, but it's uh, Modetect Deptective. There you can find it on GitHub and, cool. you know, file issues, create pull requests and so on. Excellent. Anything else you want to add? Do you have documentation? So uh, documentation is oh, yeah, uh, there is uh, documentation. So I have a very nice uh, oh. readme file which uh, contains, like, what's the usage of yeah. it, um, how does this visualization stuff work, requirements, the structure of this file, all the configuration options. So it's all in the readme, and um, yeah, and it also has, like, contribution information. So, what do you need to know to get involved with the project? It's all in there. So, and the graphic is actually part of it, or do you use another separate tool? So, graphic? yeah, it, 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 uh, it's, um, so it creates what's called a dot file, and that's just like a textual representation of graphs, mm -hmm. and then you need to use this graph with tool, wi wi graph with tool, which needs to be installed on your system, which okay. you then use to convert this into a PNG, for instance. OK. 
Okay, cool. Right, so that's like, yeah, pretty yeah. often used. Um, it's the easiest way to have this kind of graph representation without too much effort, let's say. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and you have a blog. So what's your... I have YouTube? a blog. Um, so that's a trick question. Yes, I, I, I go there. Um, so I used to be part of the Hibernate team. And okay. there, I, uh, I'm not on the Wi-Fi, but I there I have a, bl a blog under in.relation.to.gunnar.molly. Okay. So that's cool. where I have some technical technical contents cool. and so on. I'll add that to the to the video. Absolutely. Thank well you so th much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And Thank you for and having me. The, and developing the tool as well. So uh, It's my pleasure. Thank you Thank so you. much for having me. <laughs>